Hello all, happy new week. I'm Terhi and today up on Hipki Club blog uh, with Mixed Media Monday and this is my first layout with April 2018 hip kits and I'm quite excited. Uh, I'm starting with the color kit, uh, opening the bottles and all. Oh, I must say, uh, if there's some weird noises around me, it's just because I can't find a silent spot in our house and my girls are playing outside, but I think the voices are, are coming here inside the house too. But I try to avoid those those bad voices behind me. Anyway, uh, we had in the color kit two oxide inks. One is yellow, other one is color red, and a stencil, and one sweet green mist, distressed. No, delusions ink. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway. Um, my idea is to create a couple of backgrounds with the color kit and then I'm going to do a layout with one of the backgrounds. But let me just start with the easiest technique I thought to do with this color kit. I took some uh, texture, pa uh, texture paste uh, to my palette and I'm going to drop a couple of drops of this um, mist and as it's delusions mist, it's really, really vibrant and there's lots of color in it. So a couple of drops will do, and you don't need anything more. Of course, if you want deeper color, then add some more. But that's enough. I added like five or four drops uh, to this um, spoonful of texture paste, and it's delicious mint green, which I adore, really adore. Uh, anyway, I'm going to add this through the stencil we had in the color kit. I really love this pattern because it's um, there's a um, kind of flower pattern, but it's not that um, that big that you should have it like uh, completely all over the ba uh, page to show the pattern. It's just perfect. Uh, and I'm going to add it to a couple of spots of the layout and that's it nothing else i didn't add any gesso or anything like that first as i'm doing for the second second background example uh, i'm spreading this clear gesso first i want to make sure that if i play with wet medias it will be <laughs> straight paper and not all smudging all around so that's why i'm doing it this way uh, i'm actually adding quite a thick layer because this is just regular white cardstock I'm playing with and I have seen that I should use much more than I normally do. Uh, but at this point I obviously uh, changed a paper <laughs> and started to stamp. Yeah, this happens when I'm doing several things at once. I find myself doing weird things that now I'm gesso in one thing and in the next minute I'm doing another. So while the gesso is drying, because come on, I don't want to use heat con. <laughs> so um, I took another paper and I'm just going to stamp with archival ink, which is waterproof and completely black. Um, some triangles, the stamp is from Altenu. Yeah, it is. Um, I had to think about it if it is or not, but yeah, it is. Uh, I just stamped some some um, black triangles to the background. And now remember, this is not gessoed. There's no gesso, no nothing on the background. There's just some black triangles. And I'm going to stamp on top of them with this yellow oxide ink. There's like really lots of ways to use uh, oxide inks and right now I'm thinking how to continue with this. Maybe some spreading some sw uh, water on top, but no, it would be kind of boring and I can't use that water so much that it would be like spreading around because I didn't have any, any gesso first. 
or the layout but I'm thinking maybe this would be fun if there's these red dots on top or maybe not or maybe something else I don't know but it's fun to, to try different things and I know in the end this layout will be fun anyway I'm repeating this yellow stamping all around those triangles and I must say I haven't stamped yet with, uh, with the oxide inks and actually they are quite great with stamping of course they are not waterproof so you must think about that but I really like the way they um, they are really easy to stamp with uh, I'm going to try some other color I will pick up this green which I re really like it came from some with the previous hip kits I really don't remember which month but anyway um, and for a couple of the triangles I added these um, stripes and now I think okay I will add with uh, spawns and draw the stencil this is much more funny than the uh, red one I really didn't like the uh, red and yellow because I don't like orange so of course the basics from the color theory are important things at this point and I put the wrong wrong okay I, <laughs> I fixed that yeah so at this point I'm thinking maybe I drop a little of water somewhere just to make sure that it's it's not that even and and clear as the stamped things usually are and now it's much more better and I will let this dry completely before I add another layer of something else and yeah it should be like 15 minutes or something and then the mist is all dry and then I'm going to continue stamping on top but first those big spots of uh, color needs to be dry so it took like 15 or 20 minutes I'm not sure but now that I'm really willing to use this color red uh, oxide ink I thought that maybe I don't add it on top of the triangles but between and actually this is quite a clever thing to do because now the um, red is color red it's not orange as there's no yellow underneath and I really love it the stencil is also from one of the hip kit club color kits I think it was was maybe November or December because the pattern is a little uh, snowy wintery <laughs> so but I haven't used this before and it's looking quite nice this way so I'm just spreading some ink with the sponge and that's it I think that's a very nice background I must show you one detail uh, just in a couple of seconds but now I'm thinking to use the first one to actually make a layout and Here's a detail of that. But before we go to the first background I did, I will show you a couple of techniques and one background more. Try to hang on there, <laughs> it won't last long. Anyway, this uh, white cardstock is the one I did first with the chest layer, with the thick chest layer, and I'm thinking of if I would do this kind of spotty um, background, I spread water, like draw with the water this really large um, drop or circle even, and then I'm going to just add small drops of this mist, and it will spread completely. I think this uh, technique is super fun, but it takes a lot a lot a lot of time to uh, try and I must say I'm not that patient person I really am not um, I usually don't 
like to wait <laughs> with these kind of things. So, and if I if I would use heat gun now, it would spread around. So I will just let it be. And now you know that technique. And maybe I use that background later and continue more uh, those dots with different colors. But I really like to do that way things because the result is kind of wonderful yeah but now the third background uh, again I'm starting with the stamping uh, this stamp is from da -da 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 -da. I have ah, studio 40 it was on my mind but I didn't get the name out of my mouth but it's studio 40 uh, a small Polish company and I stamped it with archival ink, the same one I did the triangles first because that's waterproof ink. And I'm going to color these flowers with the uh, yellow oxide ink. So I don't want the black lines to spread around, that's why I wanted it to be waterproof ink first. Uh, I'm dipping the press first the water and then I'm dipping it or not dipping it, pressing it against the uh, ink and then I'm adding another another stamped image on top. It's from the same stamp set uh, to uh, petals or something. Anyway, it, it gives a nice small green spot. Uh, in the middle of the bloom and I think it's quite, kind of wonderful. Again, I'm repeating this yellow and green, yellow and green. Here you can see them ready. But I really like the combination of uh, yellow and green, so why not to do that? And now I'm using the mist we had in the color kit another way. I'm not flicking it straight from the bottle. I added a couple of drops of the mist to a um, bigger amount of water to make it lighter. It's almost mint green here. Um, maybe teal green is better. Anyway, much lighter color and uh, it's not that deep anymore. So it's like using another mist completely. And as I have some some texture paste left from the first technique, I'm going to use that too, but first I'm just spreading some green ink through the, st the same stencil um, I used for the first layout. And now I'm going to add the texture paste. Nothing goes waste, right? Um, I'm not going to follow the lines of the flowers. I'm adding some on top and some, some not on top. It's it's fun. And I know I will use this the way that I do my layouts, that there will be lots of layers on top, so this background will not be visible completely. Which is kind of a day of the background anyway. <laughs> okay, so a couple of drops of mist and I think some other color would do as well, but this can be ready to try and I think it's lovely. Hope you like it too. And now I'm going back to my first background, the one with just the texture paste and I'll do a layout on top of that. Um, like I said, this is my first layout with April 2018 hip kits and I'm choosing the best products on top like I always do, just like a child in Christmas morning picking up the best presents and then thinking about the others. But it's my justice to do that. <laughs> I don't know what's the right word. Anyway, um, I'm cutting up some papers. Some are from Great Paper, then there's one from Dear Lizzie. Stay colorful line and pink press studio and 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 um, I have two quite small like three by three uh, inch 
black and white photographs that I'm going to use. Uh, there's my husband and my daughter, so I'm not going to do it all pink and girly and flowery. I'm doing something else, and here's some of the products that I'm going to use. Uh, I want to have um, one photo on the right side and one of the left side and I really want to use those lovely chipboard frames from Pink Fresh Studio. I really adore them and they are giving so much nice texture and dimension for the page. I really love them. And at this point I can tell you a little trick. If on the sticker, um, chipboard sticker sheet you don't like some of the stickers, just add them behind your photographs instead of 3D form or cardstock or something like that because it just makes a lot of dimension and you don't need to keep it visible just put it behind and it will give you lots of dimension yeah but that's just a small trick to do um, I have my paper clusters ready, ready to go. Uh, first I'm adhering this lovely grey frame. It's so tricky to think if it's straight or not because that's, that's the way I'm going to add everything. Looking, if, looking against that little grey frame that everything is straight but usually everything is not straight. But that's my way of scrapping and someone might like to use a ruler or some tools to make everything straight, but I'm not interested. So here's one paper cluster and the other goes quite close, but not on top. And here's a perfect example for making a background and then it's not all visible. And that's okay, it's totally okay, it would be kind of dumb to do a background and nothing else. Okay, where was I? Anyway, um, I'm adding a little spot of yellow, these yellow frames are peeking, out, are peeking out from the right side and the left side because the yellow again goes so well together with all those greens and blues I'm having on my papers. And I want to have some, some little texture for the paper edges, so I added those um, green bubbly uh, cut out things I got out from Wing Press Studio papers. And I really like them. And again, I'm using some 3D foam behind them because it's nice to have, again, dimension. So, two words for the day. Chipboards and dimension. If you don't remember anything about this video, right after you have watched it, just remember, just remember chipboards and dimension. <laughs> anyway, um, there's nothing special of this end of this video. I just want to add a little more uh, these fake layers peeking behind each other and then I'm going to add this lovely lovely golden um, golden title on top of the photographs and then some some bits and pieces of these stickers around the photographs too and of course then I'm going to finish this all with some mist um, flicks just few drops of colors here and there maybe some stickers yet but anyway, the main thing is with the different kind of backgrounds you can do using just this one color kit and I think it's really cool. And as I'm the kind of person that I do lots of backgrounds because I want to try out new techniques and lots of new things and then I have like pile of papers which are ready to go backgrounds and when I'm really busy and I don't have time to make a real mess but I want to do something, do something with my hands, something creative that then I can just choose one of the backgrounds and add the photograph and add some papers and embellishments and I have a layout. 
uh, and I can almost believe that I just did it all by myself right now and then I will be really satisfied. Yeah, but sometimes life is just so busy that you have to be quite creative to get creative. But I guess I'm not the only one with this problem. I don't know if it's a problem. Yeah, so I'm decorating this page with these lovely corners, which is from Schimmel uh, Box of Crayons line. Lovely, colorful line. And that was the last phase of this creative process. I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Remember those chipboards and dimension. Yeah. Thank you for everything and we will see you again soon. Bye!